Hello and welcome to the Hollywood Dream Podcast, the podcast where we talk to film and TV professionals about their journey towards reaching that big Hollywood dream, whatever that dream might be to them. And in today's episode, I'm sitting down with Christina Sullivan. Christina is an award-winning filmmaker and author. She is joining me all the way from Los Angeles. Her work has been featured in countless of film festivals all over the United States. So sit back and enjoy my chat with Christina Sullivan. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. You're in LA, right? Right. Oh, thank you for waking up early to do this. I know it's like 9 a.m. over there. Yeah, no problem. I had to get up early anyways. <laughs> so you're an actor, you're a writer, you're a director. What is like your first choice? What are you most passionate about? I would say um, acting and then writing and then producing would be last. I usually only produce because I want to make something happen and that's the way to do yeah. it but I, I i love acting and writing and what uh i saw your imdb you've done a lot of stuff what has been like your favorite thing to work on Ooh, i don't know if i have a favorite because there's different things about different projects that i really loved um i mean maybe my favorite could possibly be more than meets the eye back in 2010 because that was my first short film where i was actor writer producer uh -huh. And so maybe because it was the first, that, that could possibly be my favorite. How are things in LA right now as far as like work and the industry? Is this the slow season over there or are things busy? Well, I, I think, I mean, here in LA, it seems like it's, it's the same everywhere now. Um, for example, a lot of the people that I'm working with are even in LA, funny enough. Um, <laughs> you know, for example, there's... Um, some audio podcasts I'm doing and the cast and crew were all over the country. We're in uh, people in Chicago, Boston, New York, e everywhere. And um, w what else? There's an off-Broadway play that I'm, I'm working on and people who are working on that are in New York and Costa Rica and yeah. all, all different places. So <laughs> as far as what's happening in LA, it's interesting because currently a lot of the people I'm working with aren't even here in LA. <laughs> <laughs> The Broadway, uh, the off Broadway play, would that be a production that's going to be put up like in New York, or are they planning on doing it in LA? Yeah, that'll be um, in New York. Uh, we're planning for this fall. Oh, can you share a little something from it, or like what's the play about? I'm not, I'm not sure what I can say about that. We're, we're still in pre production and, and you know working out different details, um, but. There is a, there's a few plays that are going to be off Broadway that I'm working on. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about that and I'll share more when I can. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Um, I saw that you also, you work on podcasts, like you said, on narrative podcasts. Uh, how do you prepare for something that's not a role that's not visual, that's not like on TV, that's all just like, um, uh, sound. How do you prepare for a series that's going to be on a podcast as opposed to a TV show? So a lot of the character work would be the same with just really studying this character and who is this person and, and what's their backstory and, and everything you can about the character. And then just really relying a lot more on some of the things that if, if you're acting and you can do everything, like it's, it's, um, on screen or on stage and they see you and they hear you, you can rely on a lot of things that are seen. But when it's just um, a voiceover, you really have to pay attention to your voice. But to kind of get yourself in the mood for the character, there's things that you can do that the audience will never know. Like one of my characters, she has a perfume that she likes to wear. So I'm about to record for her. I can put on that perfume and just do different things where I can get into the zone of like, this is the character. Like, even if nobody sees me when I'm recording, I could still like dress how she would, or, you know, prior to, to pressing record, I can listen to music that would kind of get me in the mood for, for this character, what's happening in the scene. So there's little things I can do to still kind of get myself in that zone, even though when you, when you hear it, like all your, all you as the audience is going to do is hear, but, um, you know, there's still preparation I can do beforehand to make it 
as real for me and then hopefully convey it as, as real as possible for the listening audience. Do you, because uh, you've done a few of them, do you find that there's a lot more work in podcasting, like narrative po podcasting, than there is on like uh, TV now? I don't know if there's more work. I mean, there, there may be just because I, I feel like in a lot of ways it's easier to, to produce um, just for the audio because, you know, for example, a lot of us, when we record, we record right here in our house. So, yeah. you know, the production team doesn't have to worry about getting a, a location and, and wardrobe and, and all, all different types of things that you would need to do for um, a different type of production. So I think it is in a lot of ways easier. And there are a lot of opportunities with the, the narrative podcasting, especially um, during the time when I first started getting into it, which was in 2020 um, during COVID, where people really couldn't leave their house or, or work on other types of production so it was a great time to really still be creative like here in our houses yeah i know i bet like during covid that that kind of spiked up um because no one could do anything except remote stuff yeah definitely i mean that that's when i got into it was um during that time how was that time for you as a creative person, as an artist, like living, you were in LA that, during that time? Yeah, I was in LA and then, um, you know, creatively, like as an artist, I mean, for me, it, it did bring opportunities because of the narrative podcast I was able to do that otherwise, you know, I may not have um, been doing that because I would have been doing other things. Um, yeah. Also, I, I decided to write a book. I wrote a book that had uh, 101 scenes and monologues, and I self-published that. It's it's available on Amazon, and I did that during 2020 um, because I had the time and I had the desire to to do something creative. Oh, that's cool. Uh, so the book is is it like a scene work for actors? Um, what is the book exactly? Yeah, so it it has 101 um, monologues and scenes. So if an actor you know needs some material to do for a, a showcase or a reel or an audition or whatever they may need some sort of material, I have a lot for them to choose from in the book. What's the name of it? Um, 101 Monologues and Scenes. I'm pretty sure that's the name. <laughs> um, I, I don't know, it's crazy because like I, I wrote it, but then um, I don't know, I haven't really done um much with it since i mean a lot of people have bought it and enjoyed it and i love it when people um share with me that like the monologues and scenes that they perform from the book um okay, okay, I'll, yeah. I'll put the link down on on this is also a video so i'll put it on i'll put the link on youtube for people to okay thank if you there are um, any actors out there i looked it up it's its name is monologues and scenes 101 a collection of 101 monologues and scenes uh for stage and screen for teens and adults of all ages so monologues and scenes 101 <laughs> cool and how was uh how was the process of publishing that on on amazon on amazon is that right yeah on amazon it was so easy like i had no idea it would be as easy it was i just uploaded the document and um designed the cover pressed a few buttons i mean it it yeah. was so sort of easy it really just took like a few minutes to to put it out there oh that's amazing congratulations yeah. on that thank you are uh are you originally from la or where are you from um no i grew up mostly in the boston area oh okay i'm a new englander too i'm originally from rhode island okay cool <laughs> And then you, uh, um, acting was something that you always wanted to do or you just kind of decided to do that later in life? No, it was something I always wanted to do. Um, I would say I really got like extra inspired um, in high school when we went on a field trip to see August Wilson's Jitney. And that play, it was just the all of the actors and, and the playwright and, and everybody was black and I saw that on stage and it was just done so beautifully and um, you know I had seen other productions before that were white productions and they were cool but it was 
really nice to see people who like looked like me um, on stage. And so that was really inspirational for me. And so I, you know, I've, I've always wanted to act for, for quite a while. And that was actually my reasoning um, for moving from Boston to LA was for acting. Oh, and how long have you been in LA? Well, at this point, um, it's been quite a while because I moved here um, when I was 18, and that was quite a while ago. Oh. So <laughs> it's been a long time. So you're uh, uh, Los, what do they call the uh, Los Angeles, Los Angeles? What? Uh, I think Los Angelino, maybe. And I okay, don't know. I, I, I still kind of like consider myself a Bostonian, even though I mean I haven't lived there in so long. But yeah, you know, that's that's where I'm from. <laughs> yeah. And um, what, like, how was LA when you first moved there as opposed to now? Do you feel like it has gotten easier for you or were, were things easier then? I feel like it's definitely easier now because of all the new technology. Um, because back then, like everything, like there was nothing online, nothing digital. Um, you would just um, have to do everything in person so um. like all the auditions were in person you had to have your hard copy eight by tens that you printed out somewhere and handed them in person like everything you know was was more difficult that way things are a lot more convenient in a lot of ways now as well as things are more connected to different locations because at that point oh, well. it really was if you wanted to be an actor you either go to la or new york those are your only options but now because things are happening so much online you can act from anywhere and with cast and crew that are, are anywhere so I feel like that's just kind of opened up a whole lot more opportunities because it's easier to work with people in different places like even right now me and you are having a conversation and we're in different states <laughs> and that's yeah. something that you know when I first moved to LA even just I mean doing this type of thing it, it wasn't happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. That's the beauty of the internet now. We can be connected with anyone, anywhere, and create magic or whatever. Yeah. Um, how do you find inspiration and, like, stay inspired in this world when things are going rough for you? Well, I mean, I would say maybe... I mean, when things are going rough, that really kind of brings a lot of inspiration, um, especially because, like, as a writer in particular, I mean, I don't usually write, like, comedy. I usually write more, like, drama. Mm -hmm. And so if there's some sort of drama going on in my life, I mean, that's pure inspiration. <laughs> so, um, you know, definitely a lot of what I write is based on sometimes things that have happened to me or someone I know um, or just kind of very loosely based on it. But yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. I mean, real life drama is definitely, uh, <laughs> it, it inspires <laughs> fiction. Good. Um, is there any advice that you would give like your younger self as she is embarking in this journey to go to LA? Hmm. Ooh, what would I tell my younger self? Um, I think I would tell her to take more opportunities um, because there's some opportunities looking back that I still think about it today. Like, why didn't I, I pursue this or, you know, like regrets of, of that nature. Um, so, yeah, I would tell her to just just do it and see what happens and, and just take uh -huh. that chance. Good. And what would you say, tell anyone that's um, listening or watching, like what advice would you give them for anyone who's trying to pursue a career in the arts or is just thinking about it and it just needs that little push? Probably similar to the advice I'd give my younger self is to just take the opportunities. Um, but also, if, if sometimes you can't just take opportunities because maybe there isn't necessarily an opportunity right in front of you. And so then to see what you can do to create opportunities, work with friends or, or, or people you know and and create different things on your own. Um, and, and like that's definitely, you know, one of the things that I've done that 
has really brought about a, a lot of great projects was just creating things on my own and with my friends and people I knew. So I would definitely say to take opportunities when they're there. And if they're not there, then just create them yourself. And that's great advice. I have a little rapid fire question. Will you be willing to do them? <laughs> it's two yes. minutes. The number okay. to beat is nine. And it's all about you. So you you can't get anything wrong. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to start the clock. Uh, what celebrity shares your birthday? Um, uh, Gabrielle Union. Oh, that's a good one. When was the last time you left your phone at home? Um, I don't, I, it's at home right now. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite social media platform? Instagram. Three words your friends will use to describe you? Um, ambitious, funny, and kind. Do you love surprises or you hate them? I love them. If you had a time machine, what era will you go to? Uh, 1980s. Favorite fast food chain? Um... The Chick-fil-A. If you could have dinner with one person, living or dead, who would it be? Um, Mariah Carey. Favorite ice cream flavor? Chocolate. Favorite book? The Bible. Dogs or cats? Dogs. If you could guest star in a TV show, what would it be? The Days of Our Lives. Is that still on? Yeah, it's been on for like more than 50 years. Oh my <laughs> god. If you were an Olympic athlete, what would be your sport? Gymnastics. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, favorite song? Uh, Make It Happen by Mariah Carey. You love Mariah. I do. I'm her biggest fan. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite holiday? Christmas. Favorite uh, reality TV show? Um, The Circle. Oh, that's a good show. That's like one of my favorites too. If you were a yeah. superhero, what would be your superpower? <laughs> Super intelligence. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Ah, uh, you you are the winner so far. <laughs> Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 16. Wow. <laughs> I know. The last time I did it, um, I was having internet issues. <laughs> I think that's probably why. But no, now we're back in business. You're the winner. Now you're the one to beat. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for joining me, Christina. It was so fun talking to you and meeting you virtually. You too. Where can people see your work? Uh, do you have a website, your Instagram? Um, I mean, people can find me on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Miss Christina 617. That's M-I-S-S-K-R-I-S-T-I-N-A 617. Cool. And now and I'll put it once I do the uh, the YouTube version, I'll put it on the screen. Uh, well, I'll let you go so you can enjoy beautiful LA. Is LA uh, sunny today or is it cold? Today it is sunny. Uh, I was there in January and it was freezing. I was like, where is my sunshine? Oh. <laughs>